Hi everyone, I'm back with another video for Diablo 4 Season 2. This time I want to talk about the new glyphs. This is something that they hadn't actually put into the patch notes right away. They just previewed a few of them on the live stream, but they were not in the patch notes, they forgot or something like that. But now they have been updated. But this entire post is massive. They're changing basically the entire game and it will take hours to go through it all. So I'm kind of like breaking it up in smaller videos here so that it's a bit more digestible. I hope you're enjoying this video so far and if you're watching this video you're most likely here to improve your performance and learn something from a speedrunner such as myself. And this is where today's sponsor comes in, NordVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that establishes a connection between you and a server to change your virtual address. So you can be in a different location digitally. NordVPN has the certified fastest VPN on the planet. So they were a pretty good fit for my channel, I guess. While browsing online, you can run into many potential cybersecurity threats without knowing, such as people trying to steal your passwords, your passwords getting leaked online from services you're using. There are many different ways of how people can try to access your computer or your data or your credit card information. And NordVPN protects you from those threats. Their service is very simple to use. You just need to sign up, download their software, and then you get this world map here where you can choose any location in the world nearly that you can connect to. You just click on one of them and you can be located in a different country at the click of a button. They have over 5,800 servers all over the world to make sure you have the fastest connection everywhere. And when you sign up for NordVPN, you also have a 30 days money back guarantee. So if you don't have a VPN yet, I really recommend you to get one. Personally, I've been using them for many years for many different purposes. It's always good to have them. And the best choice is NordVPN. So go check it out with the link in the description. And now let's go back to the video. But a lot of stuff is coming and one of that is new glyphs. Two new glyphs for every single class actually. So you can see them here. Uh, they have a pretty similar theme. All of them seem to be buffing these kind of like procs and trigger effects that you get from certain legendaries or unique powers. So they're actually very, very niche. As you can see here, for example, the Barbarian gets like the Twister Glyph and the Rumble Glyph. So you buff Dust Devils and you buff Earthquakes. Um, so these kind of effects here. The same is here for the Druid. We can basically just look at the main thing, the buffing. Lightning Bolts and Dancing Bolts and um, uh, Earth Skill Crit Damage. That might look very good if you're not aware of how to change crit damage. However, crit damage is really bad now, so not really that great. Um, then we have uh, corpse skills, specifically a buff glyph here from Necromancers. Desecrated ground, <laughs> so this is something that is only like for like two effects, for example. Uh, stun grenades on the rogue. Um, shadow damage, I guess that's somewhat useful actually, more universally. And then here on the stock we have Ice Spikes and Conjuration Skill Crit Damage. So this is the theme of those glyphs. Just to give a bit of an overview, there is, are some more details here. And especially some of the secondary effects are relatively good. And most of them actually also have very good scaling. So you see this here, for example, on the bar, we get a main stat scaling glyph, Strength. So you can get, I think, up to 75 Strength if you really want um, on, on certain boards or even 70 quite easily or so. Uh, and actually really get a ton of this damage here. So if you want to buff your Dust Devils, for example, uh, let's say you stack uh, 75 strength, so you get 15 times 40%, you get 600% additive damage for your Dust Devils. Now, you're going to have a lot of additive damage in the next patch because of some of the changes they did, but realistically, you can expect this to be something like um, 20 to 30% damage bonus in the end game for your Dust Devils. Now, is that enough to make Dust Devils really good? I can't really tell because you also, of course, lose a generic upgrade that you could get from another glyph in that slot. So, you know, a typical glyph gives you maybe like 10% overall damage, and this one gives you, let's say, 30% for your Dust Devils. But it does lift up those Dust Devils quite a lot. And you also have, uh, for example, additional bonus here, extra damage after creating a Dust Devil. And kind of similar things apply to some of the other glyphs here. So again, you have like the same damage value here. Uh, you know, can stack up to like 600% or something like that of um, earthquake damage. So earthquakes that you can get from like a leap quake type build might be more useful now. They also generally buffed some of those effects. So we have like a bit higher damage values. 
I'm not really sure if they're going to be enough, but okay. Generally, those glyphs seem very powerful if you want to try to make such a, like, you know, leap quake focus build or dust devil focus build or so. So this might actually be somewhat of a viable choice now for people that want to do this. And the same applies here to the druid, the um, lightning bolts and dancing bolt stuff that you can get from lightning storm, for example. Also a main stat scaling glyph also has this 39% increased damage, so the same values. And you also have this relatively strong additional bonus, 20% increased damage for 5 seconds. That is pretty good. You know, that's almost good enough to just make this glyph viable on its own, even if these things didn't really do any damage at all. So that is kind of useful here. So you can kind of like just activate this glyph here, just with 25 or 40 willpower, depending on how much you need, and uh, just get this effect here very easily. And that could actually be kind of nice to just pick it up on the side when you play such a build. Tectonic is there, so every 5 dexterity gives you earth skills, extra crit damage, and then you get additional lucky hit. Now this is somewhat useful to proc earth might especially, I believe. There's like the one big lucky hit effect, I guess, that uh, matters here. There might be some smaller stuff as well, but this is the one. So that is kind of nice, and it, it obviously has that synergy with earth might with the extra crit damage. So if you constantly crit, then this is pretty useful. Now it scales with dexterity, and let's say you get like 50 dexterity, so you get 150% crit damage. And crit damage is basically additive damage now, and only works when you crit. It is still fairly good in such a build, I believe. So for like a polarized druid, where you proc earth might all the time, um, that is a relatively strong option, I believe. Then we have necromancer, exhumation. Uh, so this is again a uh, main stat scaling glyph, int, right? And uh, this says your corpse skills deal 40% increased damage. So if you get like, yeah, up to 200% or so increased damage for your corpse skills, and you mainly uh, use corpse skills, like Infinimus build, for example, uh, that can be pretty nice. But Infinimus, even that build, doesn't really rely only on that. You also have Shadow Blight procs. So, not really sure how useful this will be. However, it's a very good source of Fortify. You get 4% of your maximum life as Fortify and 4% damage reduction. That's kind of a nice combo, I believe. And um, yeah, you can use this as another source of Fortify now, especially if you have like this um, corpse explosion focus build. There's also a weapon where you can like, use multiple corpses at a time. So, this might actually proc multiple of those Fortify effects. And potentially enable such a cult explosion build. Then you have Desecration. Uh, for every 5 willpower purchase, you Desecrate Ground deals uh, up to 60% increased damage, so it's even more than these other glyphs here. So ridiculous values that you get, but I don't really believe that much in Desecrate Ground. There is one effect that is somewhat good, which is from the ultimate shadow aspect, where you spawn a blood wave, and then you create this kind of Desecrate Ground, and you can also spawn triple blood wave, uh, with another aspect, I believe. And I'm not sure those Desecrated Ground effects stack. I guess they do. And in that case, this might be a pretty, bit, pre pretty big burst potential here. And also says, while standing in Desecrated Ground, you deal increased shadow damage. So it could be something for such a Desecrated Ground Blood Wave build, especially because there's a lot of like uh, ultimate skill cooldown reduction in this patch. So that might be a thing. Then you have the rogue uh, glyphs here. So every five dexterity, this again means that um, the stun grenades deal increased damage. So again, you have like a 600% or so potential of stun grenades, but that is a joke. <laughs> stun grenades, I mean, you, tr you trigger them from certain like legendary effects, you trigger them from the ex uh, exposure passive. But I mean, this is kind of, kind of a meme, to be honest. Um, it gives you 10% damage, damage reduction for two seconds. It's kind of nice. So rogues having extra defenses, but it only lasts two seconds. So you have to like really constantly throw those stun grenades for this to be really useful. And the damage of stun grenades is not impressive at all. And I don't think this will get anywhere close to being impressive. So I think this is kind of wasted here. Then we have Night Stalker. This one on the other hand seems kind of nice. For every five int, you get 10% uh, increased shadow damage. And then additional bonus and entering stealth reduces the active cooldown of shadow imbue by four seconds. That is a kind of interesting glyph. I kind of like this. It's something different. Uh, it actually combines different skills directly and stuff like that. It's kind of unusual for glyphs, first of all. And uh, it actually makes concealment more useful as well. So I think that is a nice glyph. So you can combine this with 
uh, death trap, which does shadow damage. You have the shadow imbuement. So there is a bit of potential here for some burst combo and stuff like that. And uh, then you have like insane AoE damage. And these are Steed of Figaro, they both damage somehow. And uh, well, there's one good way if you're playing imbuements already, you have poison imbuements. And you won't really care too much that it's a bit weaker because you don't have like a generically buffing cliff here. So that could be really useful. And lastly, the sorcerer, we have Stalagmite, where again, in scaling, uh, main stat scaling, you have ice spike damage. Uh, but it's only 10% increased damage instead of the typical like 40%. Kind of strange, but ice spikes are already really powerful for like a blizzard sword, for example. This is where you use them usually. So this is it doesn't really matter that this is not such a crazy big value here because it basically buffs all of your damage or main, your main damage anyway. And then you have additional bonus, your ice spikes get 10% extra crit chance, which is pretty powerful. So I think especially for Blizzard Sorks, this is really good. There's also a new effect where you can now trigger uh, lucky hits to spawn ice spikes with any build. You don't have to rely on like Blizzard, for example. Uh, I don't really think this is going to be such a big thing, but maybe, and you could also combine it there. But overall, this seems very good for Blizzard Sork. And then Invocation, we have uh, Dexterity Staining Glyph, where your Conjuration skills gain up to 27.7 or 5 dexterity crit damage. So if you get a lot of dexterity, I'm not sure, let's say 40 or so, um, you get 8 times this bonus. So yeah, something like 200% or so crit damage. Yeah, that's quite a lot of additive damage, especially if all of your damage is actually um, like critting or most of it is critting. However, that is not so easily achievable on a Sorg. You can do uh, Azos Ferocity Boots, that gives you extra crit chance. So that's like the one way to really nail this item if you have a lot of movement speed that converts into extra crit chance through the boots. And yeah, then you want to play like crit-centered uh, conservation build. So lightning spears especially, and then the hydras. So if you combine these things, it could be pretty good. We'll see. The additional bonus is also relatively nice. It says enemies damage by the conservation skills. Do, uh, deal reduce damage to you for 6 seconds up to 12%. So you can kind of just like, you know, put your hydras, and then more easily tank the enemies in the range of the Hydras, for example, or in the range of the Ice Blades. It could be pretty nice. I think this might be, you know, another boost that is good enough to actually make that Conjuration build actually work. So I'm quite excited to see that in action. And that's all of the new glyphs. So some of them have kind of like meme potential here. Others actually have real potential, like here. So I'm quite excited to see how people will use them. And I try to give my best first impression of them here. So definitely cool that they started adding new glyphs in my opinion and that they are trying to like make really underutilized effects or very niche effects a bit more viable. Uh, I'm not really sure where we'll, we will end up with like you know other new glyphs in the future. I could definitely imagine them also like adding like legendary glyphs or something like that that could be kind of cool and let's see what will come. I kind of like that they are experimenting at least with new effects and new exciting stuff. And that's it for this video here. So I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, wish you good luck with season two. I'm going to keep you guys updated with a lot of new videos and Maxwell updates, everything that's going to be coming soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.